you are ever driving down I-70 and are near East St. Louis, you look out, you will see gigantic mounds of earth. Now, these mounds are not recent. They are from the medieval ages and before, to the times of great antiquity and kings. And they share the name with the nearby Mississippian tribe, Cahokia. Now, I'm not sure about what you do in your free time, but I usually don't go around building mounds for no reason. Cahokia was the site of a gigantic city, one of the largest of its time. Well, today we have around three and a half acres and 80 mounds. That's only two thirds of what was likely here. For six miles, the ancient city stood proudly, the dominant force of the Mississippian culture. Now for some basic history. We don't know exactly when Cahokia was settled. We know for sure by the 600s, but some we dates back as far as the late archaic period. Now, Cahokia was a planned city. It had courtyards, parks, places to play, and it grew like wildfire from its starts in the 600s to just four centuries later, it was gigantic, eclipsing London. It ranged anywhere from 8,000 to 40,000 in terms of population. And they lived there mostly as a melting pot. We know Cahokia after a modern Mississippian tribe that lived nearby. But we have good reason to believe that multiple different tribes settled the area. And we can't find evidence of any internally squabbling between them most likely united by shared religious belief. And from that religious belief, the city was able to prosper and dominate. For those of you who don't know much about Midwest geography, Cahokia is around here. It looks over the Illinois River, the Missouri River, and the Mississippi River. This allowed Cahokia to expand its influence outwards from the Great Lakes to the Gulf of Mexico we can find traces of Cahokia. Now, what exactly are these traces? Copper, weak shells, and Milk Creek shirt. Now, what is Milk Creek shirt? It's what they used to make hoes. That means Cahokia controlled all the agriculture around it. That's power, and it's why the city was able to flourish. Six acres, 120 mounds, is what is generally accepted to be the size of Cahokia. It isn't like a modern city where you had a lot of fancy technology moving around. Handwoven baskets with dirt is how those mounds were made. And they were made. It's amazing to think so, but Cahokia was built not by slaves, but by people who were paid, not in cash, but in food, in miniature games. It was a developed society that was able to pay workers to do massive building projects. From there, the city was able to, well, do city things. We know that there were multiple buildings built over each other, and that Cahokia continued to expand and gain wealth. It was the major Mississippian spot. We know mounds from other places, but none are quite as big as Cahokia. Not that it wasn't without its problems. For those of you who are unfamiliar with the sites, it doesn't have a lot of place for waste to go. And for those of you who are unfamiliar with the Mississippi River, it's volatile. Flooding would have been rampant and it destroyed crop harvests. Without immigrants coming to the city, there's no way it would have grown. Round Monk's Mound were four plazas. These were the town squares, town rectangles really, of Cahokia. They might not have been as classless as we are, but the classes did daily talk with each other. Seeing an elite just talk about the weather with peasants, not unheard of, but 
Why don't you know about Cahokia? Why did this great city not stay? What happened to it? Why do these mounds not have houses on them anymore? I have spoken a lot about Cahokia, and I have mentioned it has mounds. Now for a brief rundown of individual but important mounds. So right here we have Mound 72, the most grisly of all the mounds. Now, it might not look much on the top, but what really matters is below. This place is 2,800 feet south of the center. This was the burial grounds. Now, while it might look like one sad, very small mound, there are three main sections here. First would be Mound 72, sub part one. This is where the famous Falcon Man is. For those of you who are unfamiliar with the intricacies of this mound, Falcon Man was a was a dead warrior or chieftain, it is unknown, just a man of high standing. And his burial is not like one you would suspect today. He was surrounded by shells in the shape of a falcon. Remember, falcons are very important as a religious symbol. There's also found another man dead, buried face down. We are unaware of the significance of this. That's just one of the three sections. So section two, started off quite differently. Four men buried. Heads, hands cut off. We are unaware of the significance, though some theorize that this was to represent the four cardinal directions, but they weren't buried alone. 53 women strangled to death and placed on top of each other in not any ceremonial place. Due to their blood and other signs that I'm not fully knowledgeable in. We believe them to be lower class and immigrants, disposable by the standards of Cahokia. And there was a pit of two men and a mass grave of 24 women in the level just above them. Then finally we get to subsection three. It is unlikely that this subsection is of religious significance. There were 39 people killed, male and female, but they weren't killed in the same way like strangulation of the earlier mentioned women. Some were beheaded, some were shot by arrows, and some, the most scariest part, were most likely buried alive. Sand was found covering them, and vertical fingers were found, implying that some were still trying to dig their way out. Why they were killed, we don't know for certain. Some believe that it was a revolt. Some believe a rebellion of even more serious nature. Some believe that they were just objectors to the earlier mass strangulation. But whatever it was, it was a violent death. We will now make the perilous and treacherous climb of the Monk's Mound. We are currently on Monk's Mound, which is a thousand feet tall. But unlike the Great Pyramids of Giza, it's a flat top mound. There were structures on this. In a way to elevate their leader to the sun god, they built four terraces. Four. The construction was done entirely by hand in baskets filled with earth. And right on top of it, a monk's mound, was the chieftain's house. Now, the leader has been called many things. The head priest, the chief, but just through the power of Cahokia and its extent, I think it's best to refer to him as a monarch, descended through families, inherited as the great leader of the great civilization. 1,300 feet from where I stand right now, the center of Cahokia, is Mount 34, a very unique mound. First, it was lost in the year 1950, and it took us 60 years to find it again. But even more uniquely, it is the only copper workshop of Mississippian culture we have found. Now, this doesn't mean it's the only copper workshop, but it does say a very important thing. Cahokia was important. Control over copper, the best tools around? That elevated the city's importance beyond just its religious value. It was a distribution center. From the great workshops of Mount 34 all the way onward. Here we are at Woodhead. 2,800 feet west of the center. Now, 
I do say wood hinge, but there were five wood hinges. The first one was built over there on that mound, further away. The remaining four were built in this area at different times. Now, while Woodhenge does share its name with Stonehenge, it has a very important purpose, telling time. These wooden stakes in the ground lining up with this one would tell the people of Cahokia when it was. It would line up the sun with these posts on the equinoxes and solstices. It was a giant solar calendar. From here, they could do even more planning based off of their knowledge of the seasons. Cahokia peaked in the 11th and 12th centuries. It disappeared in the 13th and 14th. Why? Well, to be honest, we don't know for certain, but there are some theories. One is just people up and left. But why? Well, maybe culture changed. Maybe, maybe they all just stopped believing in the sun god. I would assume we would have heard about it. There might have been some conflict between mass non-believers, believers, and there's no sign of conflict. That's why it's also hard to believe it was conquered. Besides the defensive works outside, there's no scene of a battle. No leftover swords or arrowheads in the side of buildings. Disease. Well, yeah. Akoki was always dealing with disease. It wasn't the most hygienic place. Not to mention, it takes more than just a normal plague to wipe out a city. London was not even the size of Cahokia during its peak, and London went through many plagues. What about flooding? Well, the Mississippi floods all the time. Maybe one of them just took out Cahokia. But the Mississippi floods all the time. We saw areas of flooding during its peak, 1100 to 1260. Why wouldn't we see it, you know, at a different time? No. Well, what about flooding? The Mississippi floods all the time. Maybe one of them finally took Oki out. Well, the Mississippi floods all the time. In a study in 2015, we found flooding during its peak and during its fall. About other forms of climate change. Cochia rose during a time of global warming, and it fell during the time of the Little Ice Age. Maybe, but how would going elsewhere help with that? Mm. We don't fully know what happened to Cahokia. One of the biggest cities in the world vanished, and we can't even tell you why. What were those mounds all about? What were their religious customs? Why were those people strangled? Well, the answers are buried between tons of dirt. I don't have enough hand-woven baskets to find them. Hello, it's the entire Civil War Week by Week team here, and I'm pleased to announce I have created a Patreon. I would like to thank Kevin Mack, who has already joined it. It means the world to me. I'm not saying that you should join. This entire production will go on without. It's just if you have the money, and only if you have the money, and you would like to give it to me, I would gladly accept it and forever be in your debt. Now for the normal things. If you liked the video, please like it. If you want to tell me how much you liked it, please comment. If you want to check out what has happened last week, you should be seeing that around now. If you really want to understand the war, you should be seeing a playlist about it right now. Thank you all, and I shall see you next week.